Well, so now we've talked about some of the procedures that you use to diagnose and figure out what, ki what kind of procedures next. Let's talk about some of the procedures. For instance, uh, posterior lumbar spinal fusion. fusion. That's probably, uh, I would say that's probably the most common fusion, spine surgery fusion that's done. Um, the, uh, like we were talking about earlier, a fusion is really getting two vertebrae or two bone to grow together. Uh, and why would you do that? I mean, you'd think, well, you know, if there's a disc between them and there's motion there, you would want to preserve that. And, and the truth is, yes, you would, but that's not always feasible or possible. Uh, so fusions aren't a bad thing. Uh, why would you do fusion? Suppose you have a deteriorated disc between the two vertebrae that's very painful and us through all our studies and tests and examination have proven that. Uh, then what you want to do, one of the ways of fixing that is to make the disc irrelevant. In other words, make it so that disc is no longer being stimulated by the motion, which means get those two bones to grow together. Uh, the other reason that fusions are done uh, is because you need to do a more aggressive decompression because for some reason this particular person who's typically had a spine surgery before and has had a decompression before still has residual compression not because of the previous surgeon's fault but because their particular problem in hindsight uh, uh, we realize now that they needed to have more removed and to remove that more material that's compressing the nerves will cause that spine segment to be unstable. So in those situations, we will fuse them too. And that allows us the luxury of decompressing the nerve thoroughly rather than worrying about, you know, decompressing it too much and causing problems. Uh, that's, not, uh, that's not a rare thing in failed spine surgery in my experience. Uh, and, you know, I, I like to think I'm smarter than the other doctors about that, but I have those problems, too. Uh, we do the decompression only to find out afterwards, if they're not better, that we should have done more. Um, the uh, uh, other thing, the advantage of fusions that's done, which is less common, is for trauma. You have a broken spine and it needs to be stabilized, uh, which means prevent it from injuring yourself. Uh, typically, those are fusions. All fusions involve, as a rule, hardware. Uh, implants is the other term that's used. And essentially, the hardware is an internal bracing system that's applied directly to the spine, either through screws and rods or plates, that uh, stops the motion at that area or that level that allows those two vertebrae to grow together. And that's important because if there's continued motion there, uh, they won't grow together. And unfortunately, a brace won't do that. A brace is, doesn't stop spine motion. We know that for sure. So you have to have some type of rigid internal system to hold the, the, that segment of the spine still so that it can grow together or fuse. And then uh, once it's fused, the hardware is actually irrelevant. The, we don't take it out um, as a rule, but the, uh, uh, once the hardware is just really a short-term device. It's not a long-term device necessarily. Um, so that would be the reason we fuse. The reason we uh, uh, decompress people or decompressions uh, sort of links into that. Sometimes they just need another decompression or more decompression and not a fusion.